Every great design system needs solid, flexible components, and today we're taking a look at one of the most essential, building a card component from scratch in Figma. Whether you're designing dashboards, product listings, or any type of UI pattern, this card will scale effortlessly across your design system. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So let's start by just grabbing some elements. I'm gonna create a title, and you can style this however you want, obviously. I'm just gonna create a bigger title here, and then smaller body text. And we'll use the Lorem Ipsum plugin here just to create some copy. Set that to two sentences, generate, and we're good to go. And then generally I like to throw in like a timestamp or an icon and a label. It's something dynamic that we can let users change, but we'll probably scale that down to about 14 pixels. And this will just be time and date. We'll change this out later. And then I'm also gonna grab an icon. Again, I like to use the SF Pro symbols. So I just have that app pulled up most of the time when I'm designing and we'll get like a clock to get our timestamp. And we'll paste that in there and make sure it's set to SF Pro. That's looking good. And I'm gonna group these together and we'll probably just keep these about four pixels apart. So I'll set that there. Make sure that our uh, frame for that is set to hug as well. And then I'm gonna group that whole thing in an auto layout as well. Now from here, it's totally up to you if you wanna add images. This is highly dependent on you know, what you're really looking for out of your card. I like to have some sort of media at the top because whether that's gonna be an illustration or an image, that's up to our users. So just creating a general slot for either components or generally images to come in is a best practice. So I'm just gonna drag a rectangle for now and I'm gonna go into the fill and just set that to the image grid pattern. And for this whole frame, we're gonna go ahead and add some padding. So I'll change this to 20, 20, and set it to hug. And then it's up to you if you want a background or not. That again could be a variation, but I'll set that to just 100% white and we'll round the corners to eight pixels there. Now let's say you wanted to round the image or whatever this kind of slot property is gonna be. You could go ahead and wrap that in a frame. So just right click and select frame selection and then make sure clip content is selected and you can round this to something like four pixels. That way, no matter what the user puts inside, as long as the component or image, whatever it is, is wrapped in this frame, it'll always round the corners nicely and it's something the users don't have to worry about. So from here, we can just test and make sure our component is resizing nicely. I see our body text is doing a good job and title, if it was longer, would also be filling. But I do notice that the image is actually getting constrained and is stuck to this fixed width. So there's a couple things to do here. One is we could just set the uh, wrap to be fill, but also our rectangle needs to be set to fill to do that. In order for that to work, you have to apply auto layout to that frame. Then you'll see this fill container option. Now you'll notice that our image basically cropped in. And if this is something you wanna avoid, you can actually leverage the new aspect ratio feature that Figma has. So if I just go back to where we had it here, it's a little more zoomed out. Let's just say these are the proportions we want. If you just enable that option here with the little arrows and then you select fill, you'll notice that the height will scale up accordingly. So again, whatever you set uh, when you started or before you applied the aspect ratio lock, that's what it's gonna scale to. And this is really nice because if you have specific images or illustrations that you don't wanna get messed up, this is a great way to lock that in from a design system level so users can pretty much just drop in whatever they want. So I'm gonna go ahead and run with this for now. Um, I might scale it down just a little bit to something like 300 pixels. And let's go ahead and turn this into a component. So again, you can add more elements as needed, but the goal of this tutorial is really to show you how to set up a component so that when you're publishing this out in a library and giving it to your users, it's really easy for them to handle. So the first thing we'll do is set up this kind of drop zone for our component. So again, we're gonna make sure that this is set to a wrap layer because we only want users changing out what's in the rectangle. So a couple things here, if you only want users to be switching out your images, you could just leave this as is. We already have a rectangle, it's set to an image fill, and they can copy and paste the properties to override that as needed. But let's say you actually want them to be able to slot in any component. 
what we'll do is we'll actually drag this rectangle out and we'll turn this into a component and just call it card, image, whatever you want. And then we're gonna copy that, go back to our rectangle and paste to replace. So obviously nothing is gonna look different, but what we wanna do now is go to the card image layer and we're gonna link that to a new component property and we'll just call this slot image. You could call it media, whatever makes sense to you. And we'll hit create property. And I'm gonna drag out an instance so we can test all these as we assemble them. Now you'll actually see that we have this option to drop down under the card image and swap out whatever we want. So we could just do something goofy like throw in a tab component, whatever you want, and it's automatically gonna resize to just wrap whatever that component size is. So this is definitely the most flexible option because users can pretty much turn anything they want to go in here into a component and then they can paste it in there. Next, we'll add our content properties. So I'll click on title, come up to this text box and click the little hex icon and then click plus. We'll call this title, replace me and hit create property. We'll do the same thing for our body text here. You can call it something like description hit create. Now for the time and date, you could get kind of fancy with this if you wanted to separate these out. So the user could just paste in a time and then place a date inside as well. And everything is dynamically resizing. So if we wanted to do something like that, we could wrap this in one more auto layout and just call it date and time. We'll rename that first one to time and then duplicate that out and change it to date. We'll align those on the same row. And then now all we have to do is add separate properties for time and then date. So this is gonna be our time property. We'll come up to that top right, same thing. We'll change this to timestamp and just say 9.41 a.m. If you know, you know. And then we'll change that out to hug contents. Same thing for the date. We'll come up and create a new property, date, and we'll just call this I'm gonna grab a calendar icon just for that date there, and we'll paste that into our icon property. If you wanna let users override that icon, which is probably gonna be a pretty common thing, then you could also map the content for this icon font to a new property, and then they can swap that out. Or if you're using a set of components for your icon set, you would go through the same process that we did for the media, and you'd create a slot property and let them change that out. I will say though, if you're using timestamps, that's probably something that users don't really care to change. A clock will represent time and the calendar is gonna represent the date. So an alternative would be to kind of lock this in and instead give them a separate icon and label to override. So in other words, we can go to the date and time and we'll just come to the appearance section here and say apply variable. We'll turn that on and we'll just hit create property. So let's just take a look at our instance for a minute and see all that we've done. So we can go to the title, we can change that out. Same thing with the description. And now all we have to do is change out the time. We can change out the date. That's not a real year. And we can also turn off that whole date and timestamp. One best practice I always encourage is organizing your properties so that they kind of make sense when you turn things on and off. So if we go back to the card, I would recommend moving this show date and time above those text properties. That way, when you toggle them on and off, the properties above it aren't shifting. Whereas before, you are turning that off and then it's moving up. Just one of those minor little things that can throw users off. Let's go ahead and add a button. I'll just grab this from the simple design system to keep it easy. You can just drag and drop that in. What's great about a component like this and, and nesting these things is that we don't have to reconfigure all these properties and we can just surface this up at the top and let users change this out. So in other words, we don't have to have separate variations for primary, neutral, and subtle because that's its own component and we'll just surface that at the top level. So two things to do here. One would be to map this to a toggle. So we'll click on the button layer, come over to appearance, and we'll click on show button, hit create property. Then let's click on the entire card component and we'll come up to properties and hit plus and come down to nested, instance, nested instances. 
here is where you're going to check those other components. So we can do the card image or we could do the button. Our card image, which is just that media placeholder, doesn't have any other properties, so we don't need to worry about it, but we will check button. And now we can come over to the main instance and we can toggle that on and off and you'll see all those properties like I was saying. As you can imagine, if you start adding a bunch of these different components inside, you could continue adding your nested properties and basically just have one really long card where users just have to sit in one place and adjust it. Some people really love going with that all-in-one route. I personally think it can get a little overwhelming for users, and after maybe two or three of these, it can just get way too much to fill the panel. Obviously, you can collapse, collapse these properties. I don't think a lot of users are going to go that route. And I think trying to be a little more simple will speed up their process. One way to avoid that overload for users is just to create an entirely new component. You can certainly add as many variations as you want, but at some point, it just makes more sense to create a whole new component. Plus, that's also going to show up in the assets as a separate component. So when we go into our assets library here and we click on card, right now we just have one thing. But what I would recommend is having one for vertical and one for a horizontal layout. That way, users can see at a glance which the orientation is, and they can just click and drag that in, rather than having this beast of a component where the variant they might be looking for is buried in there, and it just takes more digging to get there. Quick tip if you didn't know, you can also preview all the properties of any asset from this panel by just clicking this little arrow, and you can even configure it and have a live preview on the top before dragging it in. So if you're not sure if that's the component you want, this is a great way to test it out. Now let's say you wanted to hide some of these things by default. Maybe you don't want a button always to be shown. That's really easy to do if you come over to your properties. You can just play around with some of these settings. So if you click on this little control knob, you could toggle that off, and then the button will always be hidden by default, but users still have the option to turn it on. Same thing goes with all the other properties. You can override those defaults and configure it however you want. The only other thing I do here is probably setting up my constraints. So we can set a minimum and maximum width. If we come down to auto layout, we can click on that width and select add minimum width. For this, I probably don't want users getting less wide than 200 pixels. Again, we can test that. 200 is a little too narrow and you can see that our time and date stamp aren't working. This is also a great way to test out all your properties and make sure they're as responsive as they can be. Simple fix for that would just be to set our time and date stamp to fill, and then you can set it to wrap. So that way, if it is filling the width of the container and the container gets too narrow to keep it all in one line, it'll just automatically kick it to that next row. If you're worried about the spacing, you can also adjust that here in this new property for the vertical padding. We've already set the horizontal before, but you can adjust that separately if you want those to be different values. I'm also gonna add a maximum width and we'll set this to something like 700. I don't really care how wide it gets, but something like that looks pretty solid. We got a pretty responsive component there. So this is looking pretty solid. Let's move on to adding a horizontal variation. For the purpose of this video, I'm gonna do this as a variant, just so you can see how it all comes together under one component. We'll click on our card layer and then I'm gonna come up to properties and select add variant. I'm going to hit shift A and duplicate this out just so we have auto layout. I'm going to call this variant horizontal and I'll call the first one vertical. So I'm going to kick this auto layout to horizontal. Obviously everything falls apart. We just need to reverse all the other properties. So for our text content, we'll wrap this actually in a new auto layout frame. Just make sure I got all my layers here, including the button. We don't want to forget any properties that may be hidden or layers that might be hidden. Shift A to wrap that and we'll put it in a vertical layout. So that's looking better. I'm also going to just increase the width of this since we need a bit more space. Set it to something like 500. And for this one, instead of filling the width, we might actually just want it to fill the height. So we could actually set this to hug and then set the height to fill. And then you want to go through the card and do the same thing for fill there. You might need to turn off that aspect ratio lock if you need to configure the crop. If you don't mind it, get that to where you want it and then turn it back on. I'm gonna turn on that button really quick and it looks like it was accidentally put in absolute positioning. So I'll turn that on. And then for the image, we're gonna scale this way down to just say fill and we'll make sure the text is set to fill. So it just split 50-50. 
So one key difference between the horizontal and vertical was that I did wrap all the content on the right here in a new frame. The main reason I'm calling this out is that if I try to make a change to the title and I say select multiple, it's not gonna highlight the one in the vertical variation. We can fix this really quick by just selecting all the content here, including the date and time, wrap that in a new frame. I'm just gonna call this content and make sure that we go back to the other version and keep that labeled as content as well. Basically, you just want the hierarchy and the name of all your layers to match. So that way you can select multiple and make those edits in bulk without having to do too much rework. For this other variation, we might wanna remove the minimum and maximum width, but we could specify a min and max height. So for minimum, I'm just gonna go with something like 250 and maximum we could go 700 again. What that means is that we won't let users get any more narrow than this, but they can also expand this all out and we'll see our entire image fill there. If you wanted the content to be more centered, that's a simple fix. Just make sure that your content layer is set to fill and then you can just vertically center that on the auto layout settings. So now we have a pretty dynamic and responsive card component. We can switch out those layouts, customize all these different properties, turn stuff off really easily. And this is a pretty flexible component that users can swap out with whatever they need. So that's an overview of how to create a card component completely from scratch in Figma. Hopefully this was helpful for you and your design system. If so, be sure to like and subscribe for more Figma tips and tricks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.